what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so i'm standing in front of a 2003 club car ds this one right here belongs to one of my neighbors he hit me up and asked me if i would help him install some parts on it i said sure so i said might as well make a video while we're doing it on today's video we're going to install a 20 amp uh, 36 volt to 12 volt converter just your standard dc to dc converter great little units from amazon i'll place links in the description below where you can order one for yourself. Uh, he supplied me with a radio and some speakers. This is a marine grade radio, two six and a half speakers, I think, or six inch speakers. I'm thinking we're gonna mount the speakers in this area right here. Uh, another thing is a fuse block and a relay. And I told him to grab the fuse block, but just because it makes everything so much simpler and grab a relay so we can wire the DC to DC converter from the key switch. So I previously made a video on the channel about adding a relay to these DC to DC converters. The main reason I've added it to it is on the cheaper converters, even though they're jam up converters, they only have one power and one ground input, one power and one ground output. So when the golf cart is generally in the off position, the converter is still converting 36 volts to 12 volts. Now, is it going to kill your batteries overnight? Not really, but let's say you get off the golf cart on Sunday, you go to work Monday, you don't ride it Monday night, you go back to work Tuesday. Well, it's running, you know, Sunday night, Monday, Monday night, Tuesday. It's still converting your pack voltage down to 12 volts. So that's why a relay comes in handy so we can turn it on and off with the key switch. I'll be sure to link that video at the end of this video. I'm gonna go much more detailed in that video than I am on this one. That's enough rambling. We've got a lot of work to do. Let's get started. So this is the stereo my neighbor provided me with. It came with two six and a half speakers and a marine grade radio. First thing I noticed is this whole thing is sealed up. You got all eight wires for your front left, front right, back left, back right. So it's a four channel radio. You have uh, auxiliary output, like RC outputs for an amplifier. You have auxiliary input, USB input, and you have an antenna input as well. And it all supports Bluetooth, and that's, I think, the main reason that he got it. Now, the buttons do not feel plasticky. They feel really nice and hard. I notice it's got a foam pad on the mount back here. And you mount the radio with four screws that's included, one in each corner. Now, after you mount the radio, it comes with a trim ring that goes across the outside. Now, the reason I'm showing you this right here is because I've never heard of this brand before, and you might be looking for an inexpensive radio and speakers to put on your golf cart. These are the six and a half inch speakers here. Actually, the speaker says Velix, V-E-L-E-X. So it lets you know that this right here brand here is actually using a different brand speakers. These are marine grade as well. And they come with some, like a washer, to go between the speaker and wherever you mount it at. Comes with all the speaker wire necessary and your owner's manual. So everything is there inside the package. I was wanting to do this right here segment to show you the before and we'll hear it afterwards once we get it all installed. Now the speakers come with these gaskets right here and we're gonna use the gasket for another thing as well. Since we remove it, we're gonna take the gasket and place it onto the golf cart and then we can draw out the inside diameter and then we can use a dremel or whatever to cut that out with that way the speaker will sit nice and neat and we won't have a hole that's like oblong or coming out of here or anything so we can follow that pattern to install the speakers onto the golf cart while the speaker's out now's the best time to go ahead and put the wire that's included to the speakers and the gasket before you drop it into place I think we're gonna make the Valix symbol. We might go in with it so you don't see it at all. I think that looks the best right there. I'm gonna just go ahead and put my four screws in there and we're done. Now these are the three main components you're gonna need for this install if you're running this DC to DC converter. I know I said three, even though there's four, okay? But you're only gonna use one relay, and I'm gonna explain why there's two relays here in just one minute. This is your DC to DC converter. It's 36 R48 volt input, 
12 volt output, 20 amp output max. Okay. This is your fuse block. Notice we have your power input, you have your power output, you place your fuses here. Once the fuse is blown, the LED light will shine. On the other side of the fuse block, you have a ground block here. You put your main ground into here, and then your accessory grounds to there. Now you have two different relays here, and I ordered these right here as a package, and this is how they came. So they came normally closed and normally open. So out of the two relays, we're gonna use the one on the left here. This is normally open, this is normally closed. Now both relays, you're gonna have the coil, which is 86 and 85, 86 and 85 here. That goes to the coil of the relay. When the coil is not energized in this uh, state right here, 30 and 87A, which is right there in the middle, them two right there will have a continuity. So we're not gonna use this relay right here for today's job. This relay here, we're gonna use this one. This is 86, this is 85, this is 30, and that's 87. Notice it does not have the 87A in the middle like the other one did. So once you energize this quill from 86 here and 85 here, then you will have continuity between 30 and 87. This is the relay we're gonna use for today's job. So if you order the same kit down here, like I listed below, and it comes with both of these relays here, just note, you're not gonna use this one for today's job, you're gonna use this one. All right, so I got my mount. I just took some aluminum angle iron, mounted my fuse box here. I can only uh, use the top two portions since the bottom two where it's hanging off of this angle. So I use those for the wires to come in. Got my converter mounted and my relay mounted. Got everything hooked up as far as my uh, fuse block goes from the converter. And I also have my power right here from the converter. Going to pin 30, which is the black one here. That does not mean negative, that's just a, a pin color. And then this right here is gonna go to my main battery. This is gonna go to ground. And this is gonna go to the positive side of the key switch when it's in the on position. But I like to add this. Right here, right there, with a bolt. Now the converter's hidden, the relay's hidden, and then you can still gain access to the fuse box. So what we need to do now is to find which wire on the key switch has power only when it's in the on mode and no power when it's in the off mode. So I've got my multimeter, I set it to the proper voltage. I got my negative going to the negative side of the battery. I touch this very top one here with the key switch off and we have power. I touch the bottom one with the key switch off and we do not have power. That's the one that we're gonna use to trigger the relay to turn it, the system on. So when we give it power, the top one has power and the bottom one has power. But when we turn it off, the top one only has power and the bottom one does not have power. So I was able to get that bracket mounted right there it's in there pretty firm so not want to go anywhere so there's the fuse block right there we can just remove the covers add the wires and run them to whatever you want to run them to on today's video the only thing we're going to run probably is just the headlight wires to there and the radio on and off wires to there as well got the wires coming down in the loom going into like a four-way here One's going to the main negative. A lot of the wires, or majority of the wires, are going to the very front. And I have my main power going to the relay here. And I'm picking up that speaker wire as well on that side. So everything I've done, I've put in loom today. I think that's just a cleaner look. Got the wires ran all the way to the top of the dash here. Uh, the one with the ring terminal is going to the on side of the key switch. Then I have my red and black for the radio power and then I have my speaker wires.
The only thing left to do now is drill the hole in this panel here to accept the radio. Hook that one wire up to the key switch and wire the radio up and we should be in business. All right, I wanted to point something out here. This is the back of the radio. You see it's square, it's got the four holes, one hole in each corner there. I want to say, since this right here foam stuff that's on the back of the radio matches the, this foam right here, I want to say this right here, a uh, round circle came off of this piece of square foam right here on the radio. You know, that would make sense. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use this as a template. Then we'll know where to cut on the dash. All right, radio is fully mounted now. Next thing we need to do is to pull this plastic off and put this trim ring on. It just snaps into place. It looks pretty good. The uh, video is pretty much over. And once I get everything buttoned up, we'll carry it outside and put some royalty-free music on. I'll let you guys listen to how these things sound. So if you're thinking about doing one of these stereos on your golf cart, let's run over everything. This is your main power on and off button. Once we hit it again, I believe the dim light uh, feature cuts on next. It does, it's dim there, it's bright there. SRC is your source button. This goes between your auxiliary in, USB, your tuner, and your Bluetooth as well. You got your forward and reverse, play and pause, volume up and down. You have three FM bands. Let's go back over here to the tuner. FM one, two, three, AM one, AM two, and then you got a weather band as well. Go back to Bluetooth. And you have your presets up here and you have selector switch right here. Once you hit the selector switch, you can run through the equalizer portion of it. EQ there and then you can uh, go through the different settings here XBS is off if we wanted to turn it on that's like extra bass hit it again that's off then you have bass volume and these settings go from zero all the way up to positive seven I was playing with this when I left it on positive two and then you have treble, and I put my treble all the way up to positive seven. Your EQ has different uh, settings on the EQ. I just put it on user. Then we can adjust it the way we want. Now, if you go all the way down past zero, I believe it'll go to negative seven, and it does. I like to leave the treble all the way up on this one and turn the bass on like positive two, I believe it was. Yeah, positive two. I think it sounds pretty good. In this next clip, I'll play some royalty-free music so you can check it out. But just like we were saying, everything thing turns on and off with a key switch. So the radio is off. The radio has power now, but in order to turn the radio back on, now we have to hit the power button, and there it is. All right, guys, so here it is. We're going to jump on the golf cart, turn some royalty-free music on so you can kind of hear how the speakers sound along with the radio.
So there it is, guys. I would love to put on some regular music, but I don't want to get demonetized. I was trying to play some music that would kind of give you an understanding of what it sounds like and a little bit of mid bass that these speakers have. So I hope you're able to tell from that test there. But anyways, I think this is done and uh, we've already taken it for a ride. Everything seems to be holding up just fine. Show you up underneath the battery apartment here. This is the DC to DC converter down there, along with the fuse block. And above the DC to DC converter, you can't see it. It's uh, behind the body there is where we have the relay. So everything looks good. And I put everything in black wire loom underneath the battery compartment. All right, guys, that's, uh, that's a wrap. Appreciate you watching. And, uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And until the next one, we'll see y'all later.